Hey there, boys and girls. Mr. Marek in our next installment of Thermodynamics TV. In this video, we are learning about the four special thermodynamic processes. Um, what we need to do out of this is simply remember what thing is being held constant in each of these special processes, understand how they happen, and then understand what their properties are. The four special processes are the isobaric process, isovolumetric, isothermal, and adiabatic. The term iso means constant. So an isobaric process means constant pressure. Baric being kind of an um, antiquated word meaning pressure. Isovolumetric means constant volume. Isothermal means constant temperature. The adiabatic process means that no heat is transferred with the surroundings. In other words, Q is equal to zero. So if you know those four definitions and you have a good understanding of um, thermodynamic processes in general and how work, internal energy, and heat are related and how pressure, volume, and temperature are related, then you should be able to figure out everything else in this lesson. Since you may not be there yet, I'll go ahead and go through it with you. Let's start with the isobaric process. Isobaric means constant pressure. So if we take our simple cylinder with a movable piston um, picture, and just for simplicity's sake, let's assume that the piston is massless and free to move, and the pressure outside is one atmosphere and the pressure inside is one atmosphere. If we were to then add some heat, like if we were to put a Bunsen burner underneath this thing, then as the gas inside gains energy and the molecules move faster, they're going to do work in pushing up the piston. Now if the piston is free to move, that means that the pressure on the inside and the outside will stay constant, meaning the outside pressure will still be one atmosphere. The inside pressure would still be one atmosphere. And so that's what an isobaric process means. Pressure stays constant. Now in a process like this, the volume is obviously going to change, and the temperature has to change as well. Now it's not going to change as much as just heating this thing um, with the piston held in place, because some energy is going to be used to do work in expanding it, but we're still going to have some temperature change. Since we have a temperature change, we'll have some volume, or excuse me, um, internal energy change fix my delta in there. So we can find the internal energy change um, using the three halves in our delta T equation. There's also work done, and so we can find the work using the relationship work equals negative P delta V. We can use this equation because the P is constant in an isobaric process. If we want to know how much heat was needed, then we can use our relationship delta U equals Q plus W and we could solve that for heat. And so an isobaric process simply means that we allow it, the piston in this case, to expand or contract um, with the pressure being held constant. An isovolumetric process, volumetric sounds like volume, means we have a constant volume. In this case, we would modify our um, cylinder and piston setup this time we're going to hold the piston in place. That way when we add heat, the piston's not allowed to rise, and so it remains in place. And so that's going to cause the pressure inside to increase. Volume's going to stay the same. That's also going to cause the temperature to change. And so we can find the internal energy change the same way use the delta U equals 3 halves in our delta T. Now the important thing to realize here is that there's no work done. There's no change in volume, meaning there's no movement, so no work is being done. So over here in our first law equation, delta U equals Q plus W, the W is 0, meaning delta U equals Q. In other words, all the heat that we added from that flame 
went into increasing the internal energy of the gas. The gas got hotter, in other words. So that's an isovolumetric process. An isothermal process, thermal meaning temperature, is something that occurs at constant temperature. So we're going to go back to our setup having a massless piston that's free to move again. Let's suppose for um, example's sake that we started out with this thing at a pressure of two atmospheres. The way that we hold the temperature constant is to use something that is much, much larger that can add a bunch of heat that can be held at a constant temperature. And so if we submerge this thing in a big thing of water that's at about the same temperature, then when we allow the piston to move, the water can add heat to the um, cylinder, thereby keeping the temperature constant. In other words, they're going to try to stay in thermal equilibrium. So the water will add heat at whatever rate is needed for those two temperatures to stay the same. Now a couple of things that we sometimes get confused about, just because the temperature is not changing doesn't mean that heat's not added. Heat's going to be added from the water to keep the temperature constant. And so that piston would go up until it reaches, until the pressures are equal on either side, but the temperature is going to remain constant. So because the pressure changes and the volume changes, there is going to be work done. Now we have to realize here is that the equation work equals negative P delta V because the pressure is not constant, we can't use that equation. And so we either have to know more information about the system or, because these are curved on a PV diagram, use calculus to find the area under the curve. Over here, our first law equation, delta U equals Q plus W, since there's no change in temperature, then there's no change in internal energy. And so delta U is 0, and so Q is equal to negative W, which means that all the heat that we added went into doing work. The last process is called adiabatic. That means that there's no heat transferred between the system and the surroundings. In other words, Q is equal to 0. Now don't be confused. This is not the same as an isothermal. So you can add heat without changing temperature, and you can change temperature without adding heat. They're different um, processes. So we're going to start off with the same piston that we had earlier. And there's two ways that we could do an adiabatic process. We could either do the process very quickly, where there's no time for energy to be exchanged between the system and the surroundings, or we can keep the system well insulated. So I'm going to use the second option. I'm going to choose to keep this well insulated. So I'm going to draw an insulator around my piston. Saying that something is insulated means that energy cannot enter or leave the system. So a styrofoam cup is a good approximation of a, a good thermal insulator. That doesn't let a lot of heat in and out, so it keeps your coffee uh, nice and warm. So in this case, the process occurs without any heat entering or leaving the system. So I'm going to draw an arrow, but I'm not going to label it plus Q. And so when the system reaches equilibrium, the pressure on the inside and the outside are equal, the temperature is going to have dropped because some of the internal energy went into doing work, raising the piston up. So the pressure, volume, and temperature are all going to change in an adiabatic process. None of those things are going to be held constant. There is work being done because the piston expands, goes up. And again, because pressure is not constant, we can't use the P delta V equation. Over here in the first law equation, now Q is 0, so delta U would simply equal W. So in this situation that I drew, because the work done is negative, the gas expanded and lost energy, the gas cools down. Delta U decreases. Hence we see the temperature go from 
around 500 Kelvin to around 300 Kelvin. Because negative work was done, gas expanding, that means internal energy had to be lost. So do this next. In your notes, make a table kind of like this, summarizing these four processes. I've kind of broken it down into the variables, pressure, volume, and temperature, the energy terms, delta U, Q, and W, and then physically what you do in order to make it happen. So summarizing this like um, in this manner may be really useful for helping you understand and for helping you quickly access this information as we're practicing this kind of stuff next time in class. So do take a few minutes to kind of make a summary table like this, and we'll do some more work in it next time. I will see you then.